Hey everybody, welcome back to the Underground. Still the only YouTube channel filmed in my basement. Uh, first I want to apologize that I never got out the form mill video. Uh, I was almost done with it. I was really happy with it and the hard drive it was on bricked. I'm working on getting it recovered, um, but it yet to be seen. So today we're going to have a little fun looking at uh, maybe the dumbest thing I've ever made. But before we dig into that, I want to talk about the mechanism that makes this thing work or not work, how that functions, and some other practical uses for it, including a 3D printing project you might want to take up. Let's dig into differential screws. A differential screw is an arrangement of two types of threads where the pitch, that's the measurement from one thread to the next, is the difference. If you look at this graphic I found on Wikipedia, you can see that when the shaft is rotated, both nuts will move by one pitch per revolution, respectively. But they only move relative to each other by the difference of the two pitches. There's a whole bunch of different ways the threads can be arranged to produce that effect. They often get used in micrometers and fine adjustment knobs and microscopes and applications like that. They're very common in the machining world, even if you don't see them or know they're there. This is a leveling table that I designed and printed for my small surface plate a few years ago uh, that I couldn't even be bothered to dust off before filming the video. I'm going to tell you right now, it works a lot better if you put it under the surface plate. Let's talk about it for a minute before we get into the differential mechanism. Uh, first of all, this, this uh, level is, is just to get you close. If you're actually trying to get a surface plate level, you're going to want to get out a better tool, of course. Um, the feet are self-correcting. And uh, we'll get into the, the mechanism here next. I do want to say I'm going to put this up on probably like my mini factory. I, I don't know where the cool kids put their stuff anymore. I like lost access to my Thingiverse account and it's hot garbage anyway. Uh, but yeah, this will be available for free down in the comments. It does require some McMaster components that actually weren't super cheap. Uh, but it's, you know, it's there if you want to dig into it. If we look really closely at the mechanism, you can see that the thread on the bottom is different than the thread on the top. On the bottom, we have an M12 with a pitch of 1.75 millimeters. And on the top, we have an M10 with a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. So the difference between the pitches is 0.25 millimeters, very close to 10 thousandths of an inch. So if we move the knob counterclockwise, the M12 thread unthreads from the base as the M10 thread threads into the top and the stage only moves by the difference between the two pitches, 0.25 millimeters or 0.01 inches. Here I have a 5 tenths indicator set up. That's 0 0.0005 inches. Uh, this knob should produce about 10 thousandths of an inch movement per revolution. And I have it graduated out here with 10 numbers, meaning each one of these knobs is approximately a thousandth of an inch, 0 0.001 inches. I really don't want to say this because the difference is metric. And if you call it a thousandth, that actually means that there's a fair amount of error across the entire travel of this thing. So I, I hate to call it a thousandth, but we've got the five tenths indicator out and it's easier to talk about. Uh, but as you can see, you know, if you move this about one graduation, you know, you get about a thousandth of movement. It's very fine adjustment. The bad news is that means the whole mechanism has a very limited range with each leg only being able to move like about a sixteenth of an inch. That's the leveling table. Go ahead and make one if you want one. Uh, let's dig into what you guys really clicked on this for. Let's take a look at that stupid machinist jack. After the relative success of the 3D printed 5 tenths indicator video, I was left with a question in my head. How high of a resolution device could I make in the basement? With my knowledge and experience of differential screws, I decided that was the best direction to go in. I set out to make a machinist jack of sorts using a differential screw. Once I settled on the project, I moved on to finding two different threads with the most similar pitch possible. I ended up settling for the bottom thread on an M5 by 0.8 and on the top thread, a 632 Imperial. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I cannot get over how perfect that little brass pointer came out. So the top threaded section is an Imperial 632. Uh, 32 threads per inch works out to a pitch of 0 0.03125 inches. Uh, the bottom thread is an M5 by 0 0.8. 0 0.8 millimeter pitch works out to 0 0.03 one four nine inches so the differential between these two pitches is hold your breath 0 0.00024 inches that's two tenths 40 millionths if you speak machinist if you add to that 24 graduations around this wheel then theoretically 
that is 10 millionths, 0. 0.00001 inches. Here in America, we love to come up with arbitrary standards that are very cool and very necessary. So one of the ways we talk about threads is threads per inch. You know, a 632 is 32 threads per inch, a quarter 20 is 20 threads per inch. The same way we talk about differential threads. We talk about effective threads per inch. That's what would the effective pitch be if this was just a single thread? So if you take the leveling table, that has an effective thread per inch of just over 100 threads per inch. I think it was 106 TPI. You take this bad boy, theoretically, has an effective TPI of 4,166 threads per inch. God, I love that little, little brass pointer. Let's get this thing under an indicator and take a look. So I picked up a 10th indicator just to even try and demonstrate this to you. And before you go blaming these bad readings on the cheapest no-name 10th indicator still cold off the back of the Amazon truck, I want to tell you that I duplicated these uh, measurements at work with a calibrated Interrapid and got pretty much the same results. Okay, we're zeroed out and we're just going to try dialing this up and down and watch it here. You might remember, 10 graduations on my jack should move the dial indicator one graduation. And at first it looks kind of promising, right? And then it just starts to jump all over the damn place. So obviously this is a failed experiment, but I am not upset or surprised by those results. Uh, let's sit down and talk about why I totally expected this to happen. So I had figured out off camera that if you go across this thing's entire travel, it has about the right amount of travel, which funnily enough is like two and a half thousandths of an inch, uh, which tells me that the differential is there and that it comes out on average. But nothing about it is that accurate and it doesn't surprise me at all. So if you look into the ratios of your lathe, you're probably going to find that it doesn't actually allow for differences that fine. And even if you look at gear ratios for change gears in the handbook, you're going to find that it only talks about it out to the thousandth place. And if you think about it, for gears to account for such minuscule differences, you'd probably have to have a pretty crazy gear setup with some pretty far out ratios. So I use store-bought threaded rod, which is rolled and not cut. And when they roll that, they're going to have individual dies for every single size thread they use that are going to be made to spec. So I thought it was going to be my best bet to get that differential in there. And like I said, it turned out that the differential was there. But at the end of the day, you know, even roller dies aren't made to those kind of tolerances because nothing needs to be. You know, nothing in a thread standard requires that, at least not the thread standards we're talking about. And that's why this project was kind of doomed to begin with. It was fun to try. It was a fun experiment. I think you could do some other things with this if you wanted. Uh, you could put a more practical differential in it with some different threads, and you might find yourself with a useful range. Uh, alternatively, you could switch one of those threads to left-handed, and it would be double action instead of differential. Um, I don't think any of those things are as useful as just making a machinist jack, though. So there you go.